안녕하십니까 혈치과 원장 박정철입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Park Chung Chara of Hyo Dental Clinic. Today I'm going to talk about ultra wide implant and short implants. First, let me talk about ultra wide implants. What diameter implant is wide implant and ultra wide implant? There's no specific standard for that. There's no specific diameter that is defined. Nothing is really standardized in terms of what is defined as narrow, standard, and wide implants. In general, wide implants refer to implants with over 5.0 mm diameter. Wide implants are used for molars where a lot of load is concentrated. In the case of molar, I use 5.0 implant. In Austin, 6.0 and 7.0 implants are referred to as ultra wide implants. There are many discussions on the length and diameter of implant. In terms of stress and load, surface needs to be increased to get favorable results. This leads to whether you're going to increase the length or diameter. If you look at the graph, 3.0 by 10 millimeter implant, the surface of it, and 4.0 by 7 millimeter implant surface. The surface amount is almost the same. Increasing length by 3 millimeter and increasing diameter by 1 millimeter show the same amount of increase in terms of surface. So therefore, increasing diameter can lead to more significant increase of implant to surface. If you look at the FE analysis, these are same diameter implants, but the length differs. If you look at how the stress is being applied, although the length is lengthened, it does not mean that the amount of stress distribution becomes more favorable. The stress applied to implant. The stress is distributed at about 5 to 6 millimeter of implant length. Therefore, by increasing the length significantly does not mean that it will have more favorable results in terms of stress distribution. In the case of same length implants, if you use wider implants, you can see at a glance that wider diameter is much more favorable in terms of stress distribution. If you look at the graph in terms of stress distribution, the stress distribution works much better in the lower image. By increasing the diameter, you can get more favorable results in terms of stress distribution and using wider diameter implant can be really good for withstanding such load. Looking at some indications for ultra-wide implants, the first is when primary stability is not really good. It's been about three months since the person went through extraction. If you look at CT, bone quality is not very good. I placed a 5.0 implant, but it did not become stable. I removed a 5.0 millimeter implant. I used a 6 by 8 millimeter implant so that it can be fixated using my hands. The stability was not good, so two stage surgery was done after four months you can see that healing occurred nicely and this was how the case was closed i use it for rescue purposes as well as for this patient after six months since extraction in placing implant the bone quality was not good after placing 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant primary stability was somewhat okay Progressive loading of provisional was done, but the patient to complain that there was mobility of the implant. As shown, the implant fell off, it was removed, and immediately 6.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. If you look at ISQ value, primary stability was very good, and three months after, final prosthesis was delivered, and the case was closed. After removing implant for rescue purposes, ultra-wide implants can be utilized. 
In this case, the implant was fractured and as shown, when screw was tightened, the prosthesis was detached and a different dental clinic requested me to remove the implant. The patient lived in the U.S. and had to leave immediately in order to remove an implant thoroughly and to place it again. I used a trapfine bird to remove the implant. It was how it was removed. Ultra-wide 6.0 millimeter implant was placed. The surgery was done and I sent the patient back to the dental clinic that referred the patient to me and the patient returned to the U.S. If there were no ultra-wide implants available, the patient would have had to go through GBR and wait. I helped to salvage the case using the ultra-wide implants. In the case of upper, you can do sinus lift. Therefore, there's not a lot of limitation in terms of length, but in the case of lower, there's inferior alveolar nerve, and if the amount of bone height is limited, you need to place short implant. In the posterior area where load is concentrated, it can be quite stressful to place the short implants. In this case, in number 36, 5.0 by 6 millimeter. In number 37, 6 by 6 millimeter short ultra wide implants were placed. And that's how the case was closed. If there's anatomical limitation by using wide and short implant, you can help the patient withstand the load in the posterior area. In the case of ultra-wide implant, not many people plan from the beginning to use ultra-wide implants. You don't see dentists saying, I'm going to place a 6 by 7 millimeter implant often, but there is a dedicated kit, and in that case, you need this ultra-wide kit. There's ultra kit and taper kit. In the case of Ultra Kit, it's for straight body type implant placement. It's a dedicated surgical kit. In the case of Taper Ultra Kit, it's for placing taper body type ultra wide implant. Next, I'm going to talk about short implant. There is no specific standard in terms of implant length, and there is no clear classification between standard long and short implant. In general, criteria for standard implant, according to this study, it is between 10 to 11 millimeter. These days, a lot of people regard 8.5 to 11.5 millimeter implant as standard implant. A short implant refers to 6 or 7 millimeter implant. The extra short implant refers to implants below 6 millimeters. In the case of Ostem's TS implant, you can see 6 millimeter implant. This is the short implant. And there's extra short implant which are 5 mm and 4 mm in length. The Korean Ministry of Food and Drug Safety does not permit implants that are below 6 mm in length. Therefore, in the case of extra short implants, the entire length of these implants are not 4 mm or 5 mm. There is a bevel and the entire length is 6 mm. Up to this point is where the implant is embedded in bone. And this area is in contact with soft tissue. Therefore, in this way, 4 mm, 5 mm implant are available. If you look at the specifications, in the case of short implant, 5.0 diameter implant and above. Short implants refer to 6 mm and below. In the case of 6 mm implant, the surface and design S A and C A surface like general implants are provided in the case of extra short implant as mentioned because it has bevel. The length that goes into the bone is 5 mm and 4 mm. The bevel surface it may have different surface treatment. 
The bevel area is etched and the surface roughness is reduced because it is in contact with soft tissue in order to prevent plaque more easily. Etching is done only in the case of thread that goes into the bone. It has SA surface and has higher surface roughness like general implants. If you look at extra short implants, as mentioned, only 4 mm go into the bone and in the case of beveled surface, it is in contact with soft tissue. This is the same with 5 mm implant. The amount that goes into the bone is 5 mm and the bevel surface is in contact with soft tissue. The, six, the entire length is 6 mm, but with changed form, you can use these extra short implants. In order to utilize short implants in surgery, there's a dedicated kit called 485 kit. The kit allows for safe implant placement of implants ranging from 4 millimeters to 8.5 millimeters. The kit is largely divided into three drilling tool, implant placement tool, and upper part connection tool. The benefit of the drill within this kit is that it is similar to the cast kit drill. Because of the bone lid, even if we penetrate this inferior margin of the sinus floor, the sinus membrane is not damaged. In the same way, even when you punch the inferior alveolar nerve, because there's bone lid, the inferior alveolar nerve will not be damaged. If you use twisted drill, the inferior alveolar nerve may be damaged, but if you use 485 kit, because there's bone lid, it does not directly damage the inferior alveolar nerve. It secures such a safety like the cast kit. In the case of wanted to taper kit drill, if I am to drill 6 mm because of Y dimension 1 mm and 1 mm of this room here, 2 mm more is drilled, so 8 mm. In the case of 485 kit, there's no Y dimension. From one is marked to the other side, it's 6 mm, and therefore the additional space is 1 mm. 7 mm drilling is done, so you can assume that 1 mm more will be drilled. You'd be able to do drilling more safely. There can be concerns of long term survival rate of short implants. Many people doubt whether the short implant would be able to last. If you look at the literature in 2009, at the time, the survival rate was rather low. This is because this literature is from the past. As of late, such tendency have improved. If you look at the latest literature, there are short implants such as 6 mm and 4 mm, and the success rate is quite high. Even if we use a single short implant, in the case, if you use wide diameter, 100% success rates were observed. When you do splinting, the success rate was quite high. In the case of full arch, even though extra short implants were used, when it was used with cross arch splinting, very high success rates were observed. This is a study done by a Italian dentist. The dentist looked at how stable short implants were in marginal bone. Different categories were looked at. In marginal bone, it was a very stable. The group with no platform switching showed highest marginal bone loss in other groups. No particular bone loss occurred just because it was short implant, therefore, if you use a short implant appropriately, you'll be able to get good success rate. 
There may be some areas of concern due to short implant, implant to crown ratio. If the crown is excessively big compared to the implant, it may be a problem. If you look at the studies, it, in general, if the implant to crown ratio does not exceed two, the success rates appear to be high. There was a comparison in a study between short, standard, and long implants used in sinus, and the survival rates were compared. Just because it was short implant, the survival rate did not fall below standard implant. If you use a short implant appropriately, it could be a great implant treatment option. Let me summarize my lecture. Today I wanted to project my opinion on short implants and wide implants. Just because it's a short implant does not mean that it will lead to reduce the success rate. However, when you use short implant, I recommend you use wide type implant. And implant to crown ratio should not exceed 2. The ratio is important, but more than that, the crown height is very important. Depending on literature, it may be 17 millimeter or 18 millimeter, but the crown height should be less than 18 millimeter. In a situation where there is a hard tissue and soft tissue resorption, the crown height becomes elongated, but these should be addressed so that the crown height does not become excessive. In terms of patient managing the implant and soft tissue aesthetics, it becomes more favorable. Therefore, you need to make sure that the crown height does not become excessive. Also, due to anatomical limitations, such as the inferior alveolar nerve and sinus, there may be risks associated with drilling. In those cases, you need to use cast kit or 4A5 kit. In doing guided surgery, you can do very safe drilling and implanted treatment can be provided in a safe manner. And if you use the dedicated kits, you'll be able to increase patient satisfaction. As for loading period, you need to measure the ISQ value to determine when to do loading. Rather than providing final prosthesis, I prefer providing provisional and doing progressive loading. I do not think immediate loading should not be done, but if possible, unless when it is absolutely necessary, I try to avoid immediate loading. I've talked about my opinion on ultra-wide implant and short implants. In master course seminars, you'll be able to actually do some hands-on practice using wide implants and short implants. And a lot of clinical cases can be discussed. I hope I see you in offline course and study together. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you.